where in the Jupiter system, it pulls a small, ancient moon out of its orbit and hurls it with immense speed out into the space of the Sol system on an unknown path, accompanied by several smaller asteroids. At first, this moon loses itself in a very distant orbital path, where it then re-emerges after a long time and moved through the Sol system time and time again until one day, it will be recaptured by Jupiter and will crash down into it with great certainty which, according to our calculations, will be around the time of the turn of the 20th to the 21st century AD. The following portion is translated by Benjamin Stevens. C. 248th Contact, Thursday, February 3, 1994, 5.04 p.m. Conversation between Pata and Billy. Billy says but now, another question in the 150th Contact Report of Saturday, October 10, 1981, 3.15 am. Quetzal spoke of the fact that in 13,384 BC, a small Jovian moon of approximately 4 kilometers in diameter was torn off by the destroyer and was taken on a journey, with which some small asteroids followed. It was then said that one day, this small moon will return to its place of origin, even to Jupiter, just to crash down on it. In addition, now the following earthly scientists have made the discovery that presently, a small planetoid with a diameter of about 4 kilometers approaches on a collision course with Jupiter, accompanied by several asteroids following it. According to scientific calculations, this small planetoid, which is called Shoemaker-Levy 9, should crash down on Jupiter in the middle of the year 1994, shortly behind the visible horizon of the Earth. Now, do these small planetoids concern the small moon mentioned by Quetzal, which went out from Jupiter on a journey in the year 13384 BC, and now celebrates its return to its place of origin, or do these concern another space projectile? Patar says they concern the small moon mentioned by Quetzal, which will actually arrive again into the gravitational field of Jupiter with great certainty. Mark Giuliano's translation resumed. 12,670 BC, 533 orbital period years. Special event for reasons unknown, destroyer changes its orbital period which from this point on is incalculable. 12,137 BC, 618 orbital period years. 11,519 BC, 575.5 orbital period years. 11,503 BC, deluge. Special event Maya destruction of the continent of Atlantis following a feudal war with Mu, whereby Mu scientists pulled a small planet Adunis equals the ugly, in contrast to Adunis equals the beautiful out of the asteroid belt and directed it to Earth and on to Atlantis which consequently sank in the ocean and caused a deluge. 10,943.5 BC, 489 orbital period years. 10,454.5 BC, 662 orbital period years. 10,219 BC, deluge. Special event a large asteroid crashes in the Indian Ocean, causing a deluge. 9,792.5 BC, 575.5 orbital period years. Special event destroyer rips seven large asteroids from the asteroid belt casting them into various dangerous orbits and which, in coming times, will endanger the Earth. One of them probably in the year 2014. 9,545 B.C. Deluge. Special event the seven large asteroids from the asteroid belt reach Earth's orbit and crash into the world oceans one in the North Sea, one in the Indian Ocean, one in the Chinese Sea, one in the sea off the southeast coast of Australia, one in the Atlantic and one in the Pacific, producing a huge deluge on a worldwide scale. The last one continues on its orbit. 9217 BC 578 orbital period years. 
9186 BC, special event Halley's Comet disturbs Earth's rotation and leaves the planet in a particle trail, lasting 32 days. 8639 BC, 573 orbital period years. 8066 BC, 575.5 orbital period years. 7490.5 BC, 591 orbital period years. 7210 BC, special event Halley's Comet disturbs Earth's orbit as well as its rotation and leaves the Earth in a particle trail, lasting 19 days. 6899.5 BC, 560 orbital period years. 6339.5 BC, 575.5 orbital period years. Special event destroy rips Venus from the orbit of Uranus and draws it behind in the direction of Earth's orbit. 6104 BC, no deluge. Special event Venus breaks into Earth's orbit and disturbs its rotation, such that a new rotation time is brought about, connected with powerful earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, floods, and elemental storms. 5764 BC, 519 orbital period years. 5245 BC, 632 orbital period years. 4613 BC, 575.5 orbital period years. Special event Biblical Deluge. Destroyer penetrates Earth's orbit, disturbs its rotation and its solar orbit, causing enormous earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and elementary storms, consequently bringing forth all the events of the Biblical Flood not concerning the Noah's Ark Flood. The rotation of the Earth is altered, and the pole shift results. C 248th Contact, Thursday, February 3, 1994, 5.04 p.m. Conversation between Patai and Billy. Billy says, Now, I once again have something concerning the Bible and, specifically, with regard to the so called Noah's Ark, which was actually built at one time. However, at a completely different time than it is claimed in the Bible. The biblical flood did not happen at the time as claimed by the Bible but in the year 4613 BC, and was brought about by the destroyer. This portion translated by Benjamin Stevens. Quetzal made the following statement 4613 BC, destroyer falls into the Earth's orbit, which disturbs the Earth in its rotation and in its revolution around the Sun, triggering immense earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and elementary storms, and from the whole event, the biblical flood arises. The rotation of the Earth is changed and the polar shift takes place. End of portion from Benjamin Stevens. The biblical flood, therefore, conforms with reality, even though it has been placed in another time by chroniclers, as this also applies to the fabrication and the events surrounding Noah's Ark. This was actually built around 98,400 years earlier and, hence around 100,30 years ago, calculated back from today. Is that true? Patar says that is correct. But from what source does your knowledge stem? Billy says from Quetzal, naturally. At one time, I was together with him on Mount Ararat in eastern Turkey, respectively on the Russian Turkish Iranian border, and, indeed, because I was interested in the history of the Ark. There, he explained to me these very things. According to him, the Ark landed about 100,30 years ago, and not on the, the peak of the 5,165 meter high Ararat but about 30 kilometers away and not at the height of a summit. The size of the Ark also corresponds to the one given in the Bible. With this, the many animals and only a few human beings had really survived an earlier deluge which, like the biblical deluge, was brought about by a pole shift. Patar says that is not correct, as it was a colossal tidal wave brought about by a large comet which nearly collided with the earth and caused an enormous catastrophe which, among other things, lifted the ark high on Mount Ararat. 
Billy says pardon me, then I mixed up the two events. Patar says that must be the case. Billy says thanks for your clarification. Now Noah did not live at the time of the events with the Ark and neither did his family. Nevertheless, the event happened amazingly close to what the Bible reports only that the builder was a man named Noah Cadenosa, and he maintained contact with an extraterrestrial named Zebulon who explained the approaching danger of the comet to him and advised him to build the Ark, which he then did in cooperative work with his family and, hence, survived the immense deluge along with his family members and many domestic and land animals. These factual events were handed down since around 98,30s years ago by word of mouth again and again, whereby the name Noah Cadenosa was altered little by little into oblivion and finally ended in the name of Noah, while the extraterrestrial who was in contact with Noah Cadenosa was unnamed and elevated to a god. After the biblical flood, the actual Bible arc Noah history was then created, whereby the actual origin of the events ultimately became lost. Patar says that is what is also recorded in our chronicle with regard to the important events on the earth. Your explanation is, therefore, correct. The following portion was translated by Benjamin Stevens and concerns more information about Noah's Ark from Contact 248 that was not originally attached to Contact 150 in Block 4 of the German Contact Reports. Billy says I think it is simply astonishing that in spite of the later biblical falsification, the history of the Ark has been so well preserved for more than about 100,30 years, if one just considers the fact that during this time, very few people lived on the whole earth. Do you perhaps know the number of people who lived at the time of the comet catastrophe and the number of people who died? Patar says there exists with us no precise data about this but only estimates. These say that before the gigantic tidal wave, approximately 870,30s people lived on that part of the earth, and as a result of the catastrophe, about 650,30s lost their lives. Of the surviving 220,30s, about 140 people lived on the Ark who, after the point of the flood, then settled the land again in the Middle East, where then also many foreigners immigrated. This total of about 220,30s people had it very hard because for many thousands of years, they were decimated again and again by epidemics and all kinds of other disasters, therefore, they could only increase very slowly and reach the total population of 11 million people only about 10,30s years ago distributed across the whole earth, of course. Note from Benjamin Stevens the descriptions given by Meyer of the size of the Ark and the place where it landed seem to match closely with the boat-shaped structure that was discovered in the mountains of the Ararat region in the late 1950s through photographs from a high-altitude aerial survey. An article about the discovery was first published in September 1960 in Life magazine and extensive investigative work was later performed on the site for over a decade by Ron Wyatt and his archaeological team. On June 20, 1987, the Turkish government, having officially recognized the site as the location of Noah's Ark, established the new Noah's Ark National Park following confirmation by a government commission of the investigative work by Wyatt and his team. For more information about this, one can purchase the book The Boat-Shaped Object on Doomsday Mountain from Wyatt Archaeological Researchers website. It should be noted that the conclusions made from the evidences, which are reported in the book, are given from a Christian perspective. Resuming Mark Giuliano's translation. 4037.5 BC, 486.5 orbital period years. 4006 BC, special event Venus penetrates the Earth orbit and slightly disturbs the Earth, however, without bringing about large catastrophes. 3551 BC, 664.5 orbital period years. Special event small deluge. Destroyer again runs on a collision course with Earth and disturbs Earth's orbit and its rotation, bringing about worldwide catastrophes as well as a small deluge. 
through volcanic eruptions and the ejection of ash the sun is eclipsed for 48 days. 3545 BC, special event Venus stabilizes itself and sets itself on its own orbit around the sun. 3030 BC, special event Halley's Comet comes in a menacingly close proximity to Earth and minimally disturbs the Earth's moon in its orbit. 2886.5 BC, 416.5 orbital period years. 2470 BC, 412 orbital period years. 2058 BC, 605 orbital period years. Special event destroyer slightly disturbs Earth's orbit and Venus, which experiences a pole shift and receives a new rotational period. Smaller catastrophes appear on Earth which, however, are not of great significance. 1453 BC, 575.5 orbital period years. Special event destroyer reaches a dangerous proximity to Earth and evokes severe catastrophes. Earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, elemental storms, and floods of enormous magnitude are the result. The sunlight is eclipsed through volcanic ash, which lasts for several weeks. The volcano Samtorini in the Hellenic Aegean Sea exploded and triggered a 180 meter high tidal wave that rolled over the Mediterranean Sea and far into the land of the Nile in Egypt and flooded over everything. Not only do many humans die as a result, but also innumerable animals whose cadavers decay after the flood recedes, causing many illnesses. Through these events, the seven biblical plagues time of Moses are spawned, whereby the water of the Nil was also dyed red from the blood of the innumerable dead life forms and their torn and battered bodies. The backward rolling flood wave thrusts back across the Mediterranean Sea and forward to the northeast, where it then floods over the land of Syria, bringing about enormous terror and devastation. 877.5 BC, 597 orbital period years. Special event harm this approach of the destroyer toward the Earth, whereby the Moon's orbit, however, is slightly affected. 280.5 BC, 554 orbital period years. Year after Christ. A.D. 32 Special Event Crucifixion of Emmanuel, accompanied by an unusual solar eclipse produced by an immense sandstorm. At the same time, a very strong earthquake occurred in Palestine, Syria, Obinan, and Saudi Arabia, which resulted in several seismic shocks during the crucifixion. A.D. 273.5-475.5 orbital period years A.D. 749-489 orbital period years. Special event destroyer passes far away from Earth's orbit. A.D. 1150. Special event Halley's Comet comes very close to Earth and leaves it in a particle trail, lasting three weeks and shining in a golden color from the sunlight. A.D. 1238-442 orbital period years. A.D. 1680 special event up until now, the latest passage of the destroyer, which may not return, as we note the Pleiadian slash Pleiaran strive to remove this wandering planet from the solar system. A.D. 1910 special event flyby of Halley's Comet. Next appearance of the comet in the year 1986 far outside of Earth's orbit and completely harmless. Billy says so, I have this information. However, I have somewhat abridged the explanations on it and have written it in my own words. This is the end of Mark Giuliano's translation. The rest has been translated by Benjamin Stevens. Quetzal says but you have to make sure that they are shown correctly. Billy says certainly, you should know that I'll do that. But say once since we're already talking about this destroyer according to the prophecies transmitted to me, still different comets and also meteors of enormous size wander around like ghosts, which will be influencing the earth and the life of this world. I am particularly interested in the red meteor. Now, is this the destroyer, or is this another comet that passes again and again through our solar system? Quetzal says neither, my friend. The meteor mentioned in the prophecies, 
which proves to be of enormous size and will cause most severe destructions on the Earth and which threatens to bring, aside from climatic and tectonic changes also additional changes, will threaten to split the crust of the Earth from the present day North Sea down to the Black Sea, which, however, does not have to occur with certainty because certain factors speak against this. It approaches from the depths of outer space towards the solar system and is a so-called stranger. Billy says you mean that this does not refer to a known comet, which again and again passes our system on its path? Quetzal says that is correct, because the meteor travels on a path which leads it to the solar system for the first time. At earlier times, it was never in this area of space. Billy says and its path shall end on the earth. Could you not do anything about this? Quetzal says you know very well that this will be the case and that we are not allowed to halt this event. The cosmic powers have pre-programmed this event which could only be stopped or prevented by earth humanity themselves. In their materialistic and misled disunity and in their megalomania, however, they disregard all warnings and prophecies so that which is going to happen is probably inevitable as an admonition and punishment if you want to see it that way. And as this warning and vengeance must occur, we are not allowed to take any steps in order to prevent the occurrence. Earth humanity should listen to your words and warnings, but that especially they do not do. You stand in a lost position, like one calling in the wilderness, and only few are and will be willing to listen to your words, to grasp their meaning, to reflect about them and to learn how to act correctly. Those who will not listen will find death in exchange, when the meteor begins its work of death and creates a new continent, due to an enormous crack of the earth, from the North Sea to the Black Sea, from which will spew forth red hot lava, if the prophecy should be fulfilled in its entire proportions, which, however, has not been determined in its final consequence. Billy says you say that so dramatically and unscientifically. In all other respects, I would be interested to know where this earth tier arises. Quetzal says it is our nature to remain human, including in scientific explanations without scientific language. Scientific language prevails primarily only with the earth people, who believe that they need to excel by using this language. It is a degeneration of brazen megalomania, which leads, besides, to the playing down of all dangers. That is one reason why we and also every other intelligent and honest-minded life form never get involved in scientific language, but only speak in a human linguistic manner which must sound somewhat dramatic because the fact of the existing drama of the extraordinary is given. A purely scientific manner of expression is always wrong, due to the playing down and minimizing and disregard of the dangers. In reference to the event to be expected, I already told you that this one will part the land portion between the North Sea and the Black Sea. Red hot lava masses and earth gas, etc. will, in addition, create from it a deadly sulfurous wall which, drifting westward, will cover the land and with that create an additional death zone if the prophecy should actually be fulfilled in its entirety, and if earth humanity does not undertake something in unison to stop it. Billy says aha, that was also stated in one of the prophecies. But is there not the slightest possibility that you could yet prevent something? Quetzal says your question is rather illogical, my friend, on the other hand, we try very well to be helpful to earth man, in that we make these approaching horrors and events visible to many sensitives by visions, and also include you in these visions. Unfortunately, however, all these sensitive ones, earth humans, who are receiving corresponding vision impulses from us, are always involved in some type of error religion so they are not able to recognize us and they attribute the visions they receive from us to some godhoods or cosmic world directors, etc., although such figures and powers, in truth, only exist in the religiously misled minds of earth humanity. This is, unfortunately, also the case with our contact person on the earth who we already chose a long time ago in order to contemplate just the aforementioned events in the special visions which should then be made evident by this person, 
which has already happened partially, but unfortunately, also under the aspect that he sees us as cosmic world leaders, divine forces, and as punishing elements etc. through his religious and, thus, misleading maladjustment. A fact which, in turn, will lead to further confusion. Nevertheless, we will provide this contact person with further visionary impulses for the time being and also transmit a picture of your person to him, so that he will be aware of the real truth. On your part, this should be assigned to you of the fact that this contact person really only receives his visions through our impulses if we allow the man to contemplate the visions in which your person stands in the left southern part of the country, being advised of the continent's fate, and that you mention to him the fact that this part of the continent has become very hot, and that from now on, approximately the climate of Mexico will prevail in this area, and the climate becomes even hotter, however. Unfortunately, it could only be feared, which has already arisen several times so far, that he will not recognize the situation of affairs and also your person and the important details, thus, he won't be able to grasp the exact connections. Unfortunately, his thinking and viewing abilities do not correspond to higher values than what is generally available to the earth person, and moreover, crazy religious tendencies are also present, having arisen from crazy religious teachings, which allow him to overlook many facts or to misinterpret them, as well as the fact of the origin of his visions. Billy says you surprise me with this message. Can I at least know who this visionary is? Quetzal says his first name is like yours, but in a writing and speaking language that is foreign to you. But you should be silent about this, namely with regard to his name, by which he calls himself Edward K. Billy says done. Silence is easy for me because it always protects me from all kinds of inconvenience and nerve-killing questions. For this reason, I also want to give you no further questions. Now, I would only be interested in other comets and the like, which will play a decisive role in the coming time for the Earth, for the Sol system, and for the people. They are other such ghost-like projectiles around. Quetzal says that is correct, but the previous information should be enough for you for now because my time is not sufficient in order to explain to you all facts that can now be the mentioned in this regard. My task today is to explain future events with regard to the coming events up to the month of March 1983. Billy says of course, about the destroyer and its data, more and more questions arise within me. Calmly continue further, then, with your actual topic. Quetzal says I am happily ready, at a later date to tell you more and to answer your questions that you are interested in, but for now, I should devote myself to the predictions, which I can mention to you, anyway, only up to March 1983. After this time, I will then try if you deem it to be necessary, to give you more future predictions. Billy says on the one hand, I think it's good, but on the other hand, I always wonder whether they serve any purpose at all because often, I must recognize that they bear no fruit. Quetzal says unfortunately, the sense of the earth people is still not aligned and developed far enough that they could grasp the entire scope of such predictions, even in a larger framework. Primarily, only a few are capable. Billy says to whom you say this, but now, continue on with your explanations. Quetzal says during the month of February 1983, things begin to excite the world public again, which find their origin in massacres. What will take place in Lebanon at the fault of Sharon and begin will also arise in India, in the province of Assam, where local massacres will organize among the Bangladeshi immigrants, with around 5,300 Bangladeshi men, women, and children dying cruel deaths. But this still won't be the end of these massacre murders, whose origin will be searched for in new elections, because resident Muslims of Assam will also be murdered by the fanatical locals whose number will amount to 1,800, and through the massacres, over 7,30's dead people in all shall be deplored, of whom a large portion will be buried and won't be found. Even while these massacres are being carried out to the highest degree, a similar event will take place in Africa, in Zimbabwe, 
where likewise, dead ones will have to be deplored in very large numbers, namely 2,700, of which a portion will likewise be buried and will remain untraceable. Particularly in Assam, the massacres won't only be restricted to the month of February because even in the month of March, these will still continue in part, while according to our calculations, peace should enter into Zimbabwe, at least in the concern of the massacres. Then, after these events, only the severe natural disasters will have to be complained about worldwide, especially in Australia, where in the southern regions, tremendous and large, destructive forest fires will destroy much and also demand human lives, and then, once the fires have expired, still no peace will enter, but new catastrophes will break out across the country, this time through tremendous water masses, which will fall from the sky in torrents and which will flood the country, causing further massive destruction. The same will then also follow in America, in Los Angeles, where through storms and floods, damages running into the millions will result and human lives will be lost. Only after this will some peace enter again, before a further natural event then occurs on the Hawaiian Islands, when there, a volcano arrives at another outbreak within a short time. This, my friend, is the data that I had to give up to the month of March 1983 about the coming events. Billy says then I can still ask two or three more questions that came to me during your explanations. They concern the destroyer. Quetzal says the time is still sufficient for me if your questions are not too many. Billy says there are only two or three. You've always spoken of the destroyer as a giant comet, so I would be interested to know what dimensions this guy really has. Quetzal says its volume is 1.72 times that of the planet Earth's, but the specific weight has been reduced to the average mass of the Earth. The entire mass of the destroyer's matter is much more compressed than the Earth's. If the Earth exhibits a volume of about 1,083.3 billion cubic meters, with an average density of 5.516 grams per cubic centimeter, then the destroyer, in comparison with that, is a giant exhibiting a volume of 1,694.2 billion cubic meters, with an average density of 7.18 grams per cubic centimeter, if I can give you this information according to earthly understanding. Billy says interesting, and the destroyer also has a self-rotation, like, for example, the Earth. Quetzal says that is correct but this is slower than it is with the Earth, which exhibits about 465 meters per second at the equator. The self-rotation of the destroyer at the same line only amounts to 314.7 meters per second. Billy says so only about three-fourths of the Earth's rotation speed. Quetzal says that is correct. Nevertheless, this speed has increased for quite some time through our efforts because we try hard to divert this migrant star from its course in order to guide it into areas far away from the solar system, where it can cause no more damage. Billy says then, largely, Earth humanity would no longer have to fear that it would threaten the Earth again, if you succeed in this endeavor. Quetzal says that is correct, and we are quite confident. Billy says but in addition, a question why are you allowed to make a mess of the destroyer with your craft, but on the other hand, with the other threats, such as with the expected dread meteor, you may do nothing? Quetzal says the destroyer was impaired by our very early and partly vengeful ancestors from its natural course, thus, it causes damages in the soul system which are not of a natural cosmic origin. Billy says but you said nothing about that in all of your explanations neither did Semiazura speak of this. Quetzal says we do not know the exact circumstances of that time, which is why we can give no further details and explanations that are of use. Billy says then just don't, even if I think that it's not right not to give us information about it. But still one final question, namely because of the destroyer, Sam Turini and Moses my time travels with ask it have taught me of the accuracy of the data and the information given by you, but several times, 
I have recently read in writings that Mazis time and the Samtarini outbreak occur in completely different time periods, these calculations and assertions run from the 1500 BC empires back to the 5th millennium BC. Why is that? Quetzal says it's because of the time distortions of the chroniclers, whereby the Jewish and the other chroniclers that were influenced by them committed, with respect to this, the worst evils, through which time distortions have appeared in the data, settling up to several thousand years. The Samtarina erupted and exploded by the immense influence of the destroyer exactly 3,453 years before the year AD 2000, and Moses lived in the same time period and prepared the exodus of the Hebrew Jewish people from Egypt at that time. These dates are correct, as you could determine yourself on the basis of your journeys with Ask It into the past. And Moses really lived and led the Exodus, even if it is later claimed that this is not true. Billy says thus, you only confirm my own determination. Quetzal says anything else is not possible for me because we cannot simply falsify data like the Earth people do because with them, chronicles are not written down daily but often only after many centuries or even only after 2000 years according to oral tradition as this was the case with the Jewish and various other national chronicles, by which dates and events have been so distorted that two or even three events that took place at the same time were torn apart into intervals of centuries or millenniums and were placed separately into different times, while two other events, which lay thousands of years apart, were assigned to the same time. A very deplorable fact which, unfortunately, will trigger a lot of confusion, errors, and disputes with the earth people. Billy says it probably can't be prevented. Quetzal says that in turn, is accurate. Thus, the coming events probably cannot be prevented anymore, as I have mentioned this to you before, because the earth people probably can't be taught. Billy says I know, and nevertheless, I simply cannot get away from the thought that one would logically have to drive by force in order to hammer reason into the people and also the respect for life and for the laws and commandments of creation. Unfortunately, one may not do this. Quetzal says I often have such thoughts, too, perhaps because it could achieve something. Nevertheless, these are only unattainable dreams. In truth, it is very saddening to see this. Billy says you may calmly say that aloud. But I still have a question that was proposed to me and which I would have gladly answered from you, even though I had already received the answer before from Semiaza. But maybe you can explain it again, nevertheless once again, it concerns the Bermuda Triangle, and this time, it's about the missing ships and airplanes, which are awarded a mysterious and supernatural disappearance, such as, for example, with the bomb and torpedo airplanes that vanished in 1945 without a trace, and of those, Semiaza said that these had hopelessly got lost in the fog and then crashed, on the one hand from lack of fuel, and on the other hand from reasons of navigational error. Quetzal says that is correct. Billy says you know that the most fantastic and craziest stories about the Bermuda Triangle are circulating on the earth and that many imaginative and gifted writers earn enormous amounts of money with a plethora of books and that they still stupefy the people with these. Thus, extraterrestrials are blamed for all inexplicable Bermuda incidents, along with unexplainable supernatural or unearthly phenomena. All of which, of course, is outspoken nonsense because usually, the largest part of all incidents can be explained in a natural way. Quetzal says the earth people allow themselves to be tied up only too gladly by fantastic lies and frauds because the given reality appears too commonplace to them in their stupid mania faith in the supernatural. But concerning the incidents in the Bermuda Triangle, I would like to tell you the following, but primarily, this must still remain a secret for now from approximately the month of April or May, 1991. The fantasy stories about the Bermuda Triangle occurrences will undergo a change to the extent that, little by little, they can be proven to be incorrect. At that time, namely, it will happen that treasure hunters will find the first missing planes, 
which have crashed from the year 1940 on and sank into the ocean. However, this will only be the beginning of sporadic clarifications of alleged mysterious occurrences in the Bermuda Triangle. Much will be clarified and lose the nimbus of the mysterious, but which does not mean that steadfast misleaden ones, fanatics, mystics, fantasizers and know-it-ales will not continue to hold on to the stupidity of those erroneous opinions, who talk about extrasensory, non-earthly or extraterrestrial forces, who should be connected with the Bermuda Triangle occurrences. Such people will continue to exist. And I think this, unfortunately, cannot be changed. And now, unfortunately, I must go again, and so do you, in order to go back to sleep for a few more hours. Unfortunately, the time was not sufficient today in order to explain to you all predictions, so I will make up for it later. Billy says of course, it actually is a lot and I have to cope with even more than before because these matters are very hard. Quetzal says then now, you will lie again in your house only a quarter of an hour after the time that you left. Billy says okay, thank you. Thus, nobody will notice that I was gone for two and a half hours. Bye, my son. Quetzal says until we meet again. The End